you mentioned in the introduction to the film that you shot for about 10 weeks, that you had 100 hours. That's actually kind of standard. You, you, yeah, you standard, usually standard accumulate range that number. Between 100 and 150. Yeah. And when you were shooting, did you start to get the vibe that you were actually um, going to build around a theme of mortality? No, I yeah. mean, I, I, I don't, uh, I really don't know what the themes or the point of view of the film is going to be until I'm really well advanced in the editing. Uh, because uh, the process is when I come back from the shoot, I look at all the rushes, that takes me six or eight weeks. I put aside about 50% of the material and then I edit the sequences that I think might make it into the final film. And when I've got all those so-called candidate sequences edited in close to final form, which takes six or eight months, uh, it's only then that I begin to work in the structure. And I do the first assembly maybe in three or four days because I, I think I know the material inside out at that point and I can make the changes quickly. And that first version comes out to 30 or 40 minutes longer than the final version. But it's only at that point where I actually uh, trying to find some kind of a structure or order that I begin to think of the themes. Mm -hmm. And then when I, ha then it takes me another six or eight weeks to find the final film and then I go back and look at all the rushes again. And then I start thinking about the next film to avoid postpartum depression. <laughs> Um, does that strike you as a, a, a just characterization to say that really you've made a, a film about mortality? I, I, yeah, I th mm -hmm. certainly think that's the major theme or a major theme. Mm. When you were shooting in Monrovia, I'm, I'm curious about whether, whether you were welcomed into the community. Oh, I, I was, you know, you can't make a movie like this unless people accept you. Yeah. Uh, my... Uh, I got to Monrovia because a friend of mine introduced me to somebody who taught at University of Indiana Law School whose family had lived in Monrovia for six generations and uh, he took me over there and introduced me to his cousin who was the town undertaker uh, and she knew everybody. Everybody was a potential client. Uh, 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 and we had our actually had our first meeting in the cemetery. and. Uh, she, she, uh, I was only there that one day, and when I, she, when I went away, she called all the, she called the owners of the stores, uh, uh, and the head of the school board, and the police department, and the fire department, and, and inter asked them what they thought about a film, and told them that I was interested in making it, and they all said okay. And when I came back six weeks later, uh, I, I was very welcome because I, and I, I've used that sort of procedure in the past where somebody vouches for me and uh, the person that vouches for me is known to the participants. Did you have any desire to shoot in anyone's homes? Sorry? Did you have any desire to shoot in anyone's home? In no, I didn't because I, uh, I, I didn't want a home to be representative because I don't think anything is representative. And I was interested in the public aspects of daily life. We'll open it up for questions. Yes. A quick uh, personal yeah, there's a, there's a, hang on for, with the personal confession, here comes the microphone and you can make the personal confession. There you go. A personal, a quick confession, then a, a question to you. Uh, in high school in 81, uh, when I was 16 years old, I chose to use my special project because I was obsessed with I was fascinated by cinema verite and the purity of the, just like a non-narrated camera trying to capture and uh, not bring like baggage into it. And being 16 years old, I had to contact your distributor and get only 16 millimeter print or so. And I also had to lie and sign a, a statement that I was a clinical professional um, psychologist or had a degree in that in order to be able to view they cut folly, so I broke the law because I was only 16 um, and had no degree, obviously. My uh, little comment, though, is in the last 40 or 50 years that you've been making these films, has there been an effect on your subjects or trying to uh, capture them since in the last 20 or 30 years with all the reality TV and with smartphones and everybody taking selfies? Everybody knows that they're sort of like performing nowadays. 
a little deaf, so I didn't quite the, 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 the question. The question um, after this personal confession, and I hope they don't catch up with you. You know, good luck with that. Um, uh, there's probably a statute of limitations. No, you know, um, th the question is basically, given the proliferation of cameras, cell phones, moving images, reality TV, et cetera, r YouTube everywhere, are people kind of like, uh, you know, is it is it difficult, if not impossible, for them to just kind of drop the performing? No, well, I, my experience, people don't perform for the camera. I mean, and shooting these films is no different from when I no, the shooting these films is really no different from when I started. 99% of the people agree to be filmed. If they don't want to be filmed, I respect that, and there's no, and there's no discussion. Um, I don't think people have the capacity to act for the camera, or act differently, because they're not good enough actors. Uh, if, uh, and, and it's readily apparent if somebody's putting an eye for the camera, but it happens very rarely. If people could suddenly change their behavior because their picture was being taken, other than saying no or going like that, uh, then the level uh, of acting in Hollywood and Broadway would be much greater than it is because there'd be a wider pool of talent to choose from. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, in my experience, people don't act for the camera, and in the rare cases they do, it's you, you're aware of it right away, uh, so it's simply not a problem. Why people agree to have their picture taken is another matter. I mean, I don't know what the explanation of that is. You know, vanity, indifference, uh, uh, being pleased that uh, someone's sufficiently interested and want to take their picture, or a combination of all those things. Yeah. One second. Um, wait, wait for the mic. Here it comes. Okay, thank you. Uh, considering the idea of mortality, it occurred to me that there is, apart from the few moments that you spent at the high school earlier in the film, there was very little time um, spent with the younger members of the community. Was that by design, or did you just uh, end up deleting material involving uh, younger people? Well, uh, in, the, in the end, it was by design, because everything you see in the film is, 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 a, is, a, is a reflection of a choice. Uh, but uh, I, I didn't deliberately leave out younger people. You see people of all ages in the film. But most of the people in conversation. Yeah, most of the people yeah. in the conversation are older. But I mean, I didn't really have any conversations with with younger people. I mean, I, maybe I didn't know where to look for them, or maybe I missed them. Lady, all the way in the back. There's a wait for the microphone. It's should just bring it up. Thank you. I have a question about two separate scenes. The first one, what class was that supposed to be? And the second one is, uh, how did you get access to the Masons? Because I was under the impression that they, you know, their rituals are private and open to Masons only. What class was that supposed to be? Exactly, the one about basketball. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was an English class. <laughs> <laughs> Then the second question is, how did you get into the sanctum sanctorum of the, the you know, oh, third degree uh, masons? Oh, the masons. I, well, I heard that uh, there was going to be a celebration of a member, uh, somebody who'd been a mason for 50 years, and I asked. And they said, okay. They checked with the um, uh, main, the national headquarters of uh, the masons, which was in, Indi or I forgot what the national, the state headquarters, I think in Indianapolis, and they said, okay. Because it was a public ceremony, there uh, were also members of the honoree's family there. Uh, so they said, okay. I, I don't yeah. think I revealed too many of the secret gestures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were very respectful of that. Yeah, this gentleman here, also in the back. Um, here you go. Yeah, it 
is. Uh, so I just want to say that it was a really remarkable film. Uh, I'm a, myself and my best friend were filmmakers from Boston, uh, so we really look up to you a lot. Um, and I'm a little bit nervous, actually. Um, but the thing that I was wondering, specifically the scene, I think it was in the car show of the man with the hat um, who was speaking. He was kind of just uh, rambling for a while and talking about uh, when he was, all the things he was doing when he was 15 years old. Um, and so I'm curious for people who might not be aware of sort of, um, you know, what you are doing and who might not be familiar with you, people being uh, the residents of Monrovia, um, are that, so with people having a conversation, um, how do you, I'm curious what it looks like in terms of filming it, because um, I've sort of filmed similar shorts in Nantucket and Newburyport in, in museums in Boston. So for people having a conversation, um, are they okay with being um, sort of analyzed uh, subjectively? Um, and you know, these are really personal details that a lot of people are sharing. So I'm curious if they express concerns with, um, you know, where is this going to be and whatnot. I'm, I'm curious, sort of, with that specific scene, how does the filming of that take place? Um, in, in a really intimate conversation. Yeah, I mean, to summarize the question, essentially the people, specifically the references to the scene at the car show with the man who's you know, yeah. um, reminiscing about his past and, and, and with a scene like that, there's this gentleman feels that maybe it leads to some problems potentially with the man that you're filming. How does he well, feel I mean, about every, being filmed? I mean, the, the Everybody knows you're filming. I mean, often the mic isn't much further away than it, this mic is for me. And you, the mic is like that, or like that. Uh, and so, and, and on the wide shots, on the wide shots, it's just outside the frame. Uh, and in some situations, not for the man who's talking about cars, at the end of the film, uh, often I use radio mics. Um, uh, but everybody's aware that a film is being made, and I ask permission. Sometimes I don't ask permission until after the sequence is shot. Uh, and sometimes, I, I, in the press of events, I don't get permission. Uh, but most, for most of the sequences, I have permission. And when I'm dealing with people in public places or in public institutions, like the town council meeting, or public spaces like the fairgrounds, I don't feel that I need to get either written or tape-recorded releases because uh, I'm protected by the First Amendment. And when the founders wrote the First Amendment to the Constitution in the 18th century, they didn't realize they were protecting documentary filmmakers, but uh, the Supreme Court in a number of cases has uh, said the free speech protection extends to situations like that. Uh, the beginning, you said you, you, the uh, theme was not necessarily mortality. What were the themes that you were interested in? Could you speak well, a little bit about that? To me, it looked like you were talking about the growing industrialization of the f way we farm mm. and maybe the pollution of some of our foods, the mass production versus the way people try to keep healthy to get in this environment, maybe small town Trump America, but I would be very interested to know what themes you, dis you really wanted to emphasize. I, I, it's a question about, the, it, about themes, and uh, in fact, Fred did agree that mortality is a theme in the movie, but that there are in fact a lot of interlocking themes, many of which you suggested, you know, industrialization, pollution of the environment, et cetera. So the question is, I suppose an editing question about when you're putting the form of the film together. This returns to the first question that we began with, where you're I mean, finding all I the themes. Yeah. Well, I mean, my, my job is to editor as editor is to convince myself that I understand what's going on in each sequence. And no, that may be delusional, uh, but in order to make the choice of whether or not I want to use a sequence. And then 
the various choices that are involved in cutting it down to a usable form and then trying to figure out where to place it in the structure of the film all requires me to think that I understand what's going on, not only in, in each sequence, but what the consequences are of the particular order I choose to place the sequences in. So on the one hand, it's a, uh, it's a very, uh, for lack of a better word, rational process, and, uh, all, but it's also non-rational or maybe irrational in the sense that I've learned to pay attention to the thoughts at the margin of my head which, you know, the, all the, I, I, I've experienced all the cliches. I've thought of cuts, I've dreamt them, I've thought of them in the shower, they've occurred to me walking down the street. But before a film is finished, I have to be able to rationalize to myself by putting into words why each shot is there, what its relationship is to the shot that precedes it or follows it, how the first 10 minutes of the film is related to the last 10 minutes of the film. If I can't do that, it is, I, I, I think there's a problem. So I have to, and whether I'm right or not is another matter, but I have to think uh, that I understand the material sufficiently to uh, provide a verbal rationale for why each shot and each sequence is there in the order in which they're placed. But to return to this question and clarify something that this that this lady brought up, which is the question of the themes, and well, she the, named the, the themes. Do you think of them I mean, as themes? It, I mean, I, I think it's true of any form. It, there's the literal aspect, and there's the abstract aspect. The literal aspect is what are the words that are used, what are the stories that are being recounted, uh, what what kind of clothes people are wearing, the, their choice of words, uh, their gestures, uh, when, when, why does somebody ask for a cigarette at a particular moment? Uh, and there's the abstract aspect, what, is, what are the implications, what is being suggested by the specific encounters or by the relationship of the sequences to each other? Um, and the real movie takes place in the relationship between the literal and the abstract. Yes, sir, right there. Hi, um, so I know you don't like the term fly on the wall, but when you have a scene like a meeting or in the classroom, how do you work with your crew and direct a scene without getting in the way of the events happening? Well, I, I don't like flying the wall, and I don't like participant, uh, 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 you know, observational cinema or cinema verite. Uh, I mean, I like to think I'm some, somewhat more conscious than a fly on the wall. Uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> the, uh, the crew consists of three of us. Uh, I direct and I do the sound. I work with a very good cameraman, John Davey, who I've worked with for many years. And we, we have signals that we use uh, for various kinds of shots. We're constantly looking at each other. Uh, we look at the rushes together every night. We, there's, for some situations, there's, for example, a meeting. There's standard ways that we have for shooting a meeting. You, you, need to, you, need to, you need an establishing wide shot at some point. You have to have a shot behind the, man, uh, the person who's chairing the meeting. Uh, in quiet moments when I decide that the conversation isn't particularly interesting, we shoot cutaways, uh, shots of people not talking, because I know that in order to reduce the sequence to a usable form, I'm going to need shots of people uh, reacting uh, to what's being said. The way those shots are used in the final film usually has nothing to do with what happened at the moment the words you're hearing are being uttered, because you can't, you can't have the camera, we only use one camera, you can't have the camera on the person speaking and get the reaction shot. So the reaction shots are only one of many fictional aspects of this kind of filmmaking. But we're, the, the short answer to the question is we're, we're, we look at each other, we're, uh, we have signals that we use, and we look at the rushes together every night and talk about how, how things should be shot. And we'll do one more. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Hi, thank you for that wonderful look into that part of the country, especially for us city folk. And also thank you for making me into a vegetarian. <laughs> it, it happened my, just now, huh? <laughs> my question is, were you exposed to any of s typical societal ills such as substance abuse issues and other ills? Were you, were you um, uh, did you film um, or were you, you know, did you have the opportunity to film what this woman terms societal ills, such as opioid, you know, addiction, that, um. Oh, well, I, I, I would have had I seen it. Uh, I, I think there's a, a certain suggestion of the epidemic of obesity uh, uh, in the film, uh, but I, I didn't see any indications of the opioid. I, I mean, I'm not saying it didn't exist, I just don't know, and nobody talked about it, and I hung out with the police uh, a fair amount, and there were no calls, and I hung out with the fire department, and there were no calls. But yeah, I just, in a sense, might have been unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fred, when is the film opening at Film Forum? That's, uh, oh, when's it, it's opening at the Film Forum, thank you, on October 26th. Yeah, okay. Um, thanks for bringing it here to the New York Film well, Festival. Thank you for inviting Thanks me. for coming today. <laughs>